First of all, if your DM or a fellow player just sent you this video, you're probably not doing anything wrong. Well, probably. I don't know you, but I do know all of us can improve and become better, more supportive, more engaged players within our gaming groups. And I'm sure you've already heard a lot of general advice out there encouraging you to engage with the game to become a better D&D player. But not a lot of practical tips on how to engage, or how to show your DM and your fellow players that you're already engaged in the game, or why some common pieces of advice actually work to show your engagement. So, I asked a couple hundred Dungeon Masters what makes a great player, then distilled their hundreds of responses into this single video. Because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing D&D together, and my personal tip for showing your engagement during a session is to really bring your character, their equipment, their attacks and spells to life with better descriptions. Not longer descriptions that just take up everyone's time, brief, detailed ones that call upon the senses. So instead of, yeah, my guy is drawing a map of the dungeon, try something like, by the light of our torches and spells, I'm plotting out the dungeon, leaning on the stone walls or the back of Eric Gorndolf's armor. I take my best guesses at the distances, then chalk up and stow away my maps to keep them safe. And that was really easy to write because I based it on an even better description from the first person player collection on Describe. Yeah, this online library of professionally written descriptive text is not just for DMs anymore. And combined with the free scenes for items, spells, and characters, you have plenty to work with as a player. But you can get all 7,000 plus scenes from Describe if you sign up through the link below and you use code BOB to save 10%. And speaking of maps and taking notes, those common pieces of player advice were surprisingly low on our list of what DMs really want, but they shouldn't be underrated. They are simple, almost mindless activities to show your DM that you are still listening and that you value and want to remember and better envision the events of the session. Plus, you can share your notes and drawings among the group to help everyone remember the details and stay engaged between sessions. That's an easy thing to do, and I know I love seeing when my players do this. This next one was also surprisingly low on the list, but I think it's either overrated or underrated depending on your game experience. Can you guess what it is? Learning the rules. If you're new to RPGs, 5e is not a simple system, period. It's way more complicated than any other game you might play on a game night, besides another more complicated RPG. But after a few sessions, you should know your character's abilities and the basics of the system. Because if you're consistently taking long turns in combat, or if you need a lot of rules clarifications, you're kind of wasting the group's time. Fortunately, the basic rules are free to view online at any time, and there are thousands of videos on YouTube that will help. However, all you experienced players get a little nuanced tip here. Learn the rules with your character. This is not only a nice way for me to say, don't metagame, which came up a lot, it's also the most fun way to explore a new setting or just a new campaign. Think like that character. And that may sound really easy to you, it's just role playing. But to actually decouple the rules from your brain and choose actions that make sense, not because you know what works and what doesn't, but because it's truly what your character would do, is a vital exercise in keeping the game fun for yourself and for the other folks at your table. And the easiest way to do this matches up perfectly with our next tip. Create a character that fits in the setting. It's way, way too common for D&D players, new and old, to create their characters in a vacuum before they even know what the campaign will be like. How do you think I ended up with my super cool Eric Cocker bard, Barty McFly? You don't have to know every detail of the setting, but if your DM gives you a primer, read the primer. If they don't, ask for some info and ask the other players what they're thinking about making so you can be an at least mostly cohesive party of heroes that belong in the world. Most importantly, your character should have goals and motivations that are tied to NPCs or locations within the setting to really show your investment in it. That's such a simple way to show respect for the DM which we're going to expand on later, trust me. Especially if you're playing in your DM's homebrew setting. It's easy and awesome to root your character in that world from the beginning. And this is also a great way to show respect for the tone or theme of the game, which is another tip I know 
I need to hear because I love to laugh all the time, not just during D&D, but definitely during D&D. So while another tip tied to this one is have fun and express that passion for the game with others, you, or at least I, really have to balance the silly attitude with the tone our DM is trying to capture. If it's a serious tone, be serious for a little bit. If it's comedic, go wild, but recognize and appreciate the difference. And that is way easier if you master this next tip that I never really heard articulated so well before. Accept failure. I love it. Being able to try something, fail, and move on without questioning the DM, getting angry at the dice, or blaming another player for something is what keeps the game moving smoothly. The opposite is what I used to see DMing for middle schoolers. But sure, if it's a tense and dramatic moment when you fail, and that failure has a harsh consequence, your character can lean into that. Otherwise, you probably only have like one more hour to play and there's no way you or your friends should be wasting game time on poor sportsmanship. Okay, here's where we get to the big ones, the most desired traits of a D&D player. Engage with the scene. And I know, this is one of those really broad pieces of advice, but here's what it really means according to a few hundred dungeon masters. Talk to NPCs. So many people wrote that one in, please do it. Interact with the environment. So if your DM describes a scene with no NPCs, you should probably be searching for something. Treasure, traps, secret doors. I don't know your character's objective, but they're in that location for a reason, and if they're not, go somewhere else. And when your DM plants an obvious story hook, an extra detailed NPC, location, item, monster, whatever, bite the hook. Sure, not every player will recognize a quest when they see one, but don't go out of your way to ignore things the DM has clearly prepared for you to explore. All right, but a little sidebar. If your character doesn't really fit in the world, like we talked about earlier, maybe the quest hook won't appeal to them. Fine, but if it happens over and over, that's a problem between you and your DM that you need to reconcile. And you can do it with this next tip. Collaborate and world build with your dungeon master. If your DM is really cool, they'll let you do this during the session and roll with whatever you improvise as long as it matches the tone, like we talked about before. But this was not super commonly suggested, and that makes sense. Typically speaking, the DM controls the world. Usually players are not speaking things into existence. That's the DM's job. But every time I've seen a player do this, mostly new players who didn't know not to, and I've seen the DM say, okay, yeah, but, and they found a way to make it work, it was amazing fun. Still, most DMs appreciate your world building suggestions out of game, like between sessions, when together you can maybe add a location or faction based on the backstory of your character or weave your ideas into part of the setting that already exists. This is how you can tie your goofy Eric Hocker bard into the setting. And before you know it, you will be seeing quest hooks you want to bite. And we're about to get into the most important advice of all about specific ways that you can really show support for your fellow players and honestly be everyone's favorite player in the group. But first, here's some quick tips for supporting your DM. And DMs, this is where you should like and share the video if you haven't already so more people will be reminded to do this stuff. Show up on time. Tell them well beforehand if you can't make it and thank your DM after the session. They probably worked really hard to prep it, so it's just polite to say thanks. But you don't have to be exclusively positive. Be nice, but definitely tell them if there's something about the game you don't like. They may be able to change it, or at least find a compromise, but that can't happen if you don't communicate what's on your mind. And if you're already good at talking, make sure you're listening to the DM. You know, basic manners. Don't interrupt them or other players for that matter, and just pay attention when they talk because asking them to repeat what they just said gets really old really fast and wastes everyone's time. And for those reasons, be patient with your DM, especially if they're still learning and always respect their rulings. A mean-spirited debate is the worst way to waste someone's time, and that's what Reddit comments are for, not Dungeons and Dragons. But it is awesome to ask your DM clarifying questions, especially about their own setting, because either they're dying to tell people about it, or they don't have a lot of answers and your question could turn into a fun thought exercise. And keep the conversation going between sessions with this world building by sharing notes or just checking in with other players to make sure everyone can make it to the next session and hype them up for it. That will make your DM proud and happy to have you in their group. 
and you should also be respecting everyone else. Now, this is kind of a problem, that respecting other players was so high on the list for being a great player, when really, showing respect is just part of being a good person. And I know you're already a good person, but this tells me, and it should tell you, that a lot of us out there might not always be acting like it during the game. And yeah, I have seen way too many Reddit posts to back that up. So let's do a quick review. Mainly, when another player is talking, listen to them. And really listen. It doesn't matter if they're younger than you, older, man, woman, neither, or anywhere in between. Whatever they believe or don't believe or look like, you just keep your mouth closed until they're done talking. It's that easy. <laughs> Sure, if they're really like rambling on for a long time with one NPC and everyone's getting bored, then you can politely communicate that to the DM so they can move the game along. But you have to exercise patience, you have to share the spotlight, and you have to read the room to see if whatever's going on in the situation is actually bothering anyone else. Or to see if how you're acting might be bothering anyone else, because you don't want to be that guy. And if you realize you are being that guy, just communicate to find out exactly what you did, apologize, move on, and don't do it again. Done. But the number one factor that came up more than any other response on how to be a truly great player, and honestly the fact that DMs seem to want this more than respect for themselves and for other players may be part of the problem, but anyway, your DM wants you to engage with the other player characters. And this doesn't mean you have to speak in character with a cool voice, Seriously, only like one person out of those couple hundred replies specifically mentioned doing cool voices. All this means is that you need to show that your character is curious and appreciative of the other player characters. So, in character or third person, your character should ask them about their backstory. Think of how detailed some of your backstories are. Wouldn't it be awesome to share some of that naturally in game for a fellow player to show interest in what you created? Trust me, it does feel awesome. And you can initiate that behavior, and if you're lucky, it'll come back around. But not just backstory details. Your characters could be discussing and speculating about the plot of the adventure, about NPCs and monsters they've encountered, and this really reaches a peak when your character just supports the ideas and motivations of the other party members. When you want them to achieve their goals even ahead of your own, that selflessness really creates strong bonds that any group of adventuring heroes should have. That's like why people watch Critical Role. So is this easy to do? Not really if you're just learning the rules of the game, but making an effort to invest in the other characters as much as your own really makes you a great player. So your homework for your next D&D session as a player is to learn at least one fun fact about another player character in your party and write it here in the comments. Then. Watch this video about what DMs should be doing to hold their players' attention, and keep building.